know what I feel like doing today? Unboxing an LG OLED. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and while the Sony A90J and the LG G1 OLEDs are getting all the attention this year, I actually think this TV here, the LG C1 OLED, may be the more important OLED because it's far more affordable and I think lots of people are going to want to buy it because it's still going to have great picture quality even if it doesn't have the juiced up brightness that those other OLEDs I just mentioned have. I can't wait to review this thing, but before we do that, I'm going to show you what's in the box. We're going to get this thing set up, make a few tweaks to the settings, and then get some first impressions. Let's do it, shall we? Before I get into it, I'm curious, what are the biggest questions you have about the LG C1 OLED this year? Drop those questions in the comments if you would, and while you're down there, please click like and subscribe because we are gunning for a million subs and I can't do it without your help. And as always, we have shopping links to the products that we cover down in the description as well, so you can support the channel that way. Thank you so much, let's go. Here's everything that comes in the box. Some of this may look familiar to you if you're familiar with LG's OLEDs. We've got the silver front plate that we'll be putting on in a moment. The super, super heavy stand, which as you may have noticed is sort of this off-white that actually matches the back of the TV that we'll see in a minute. There's a strap for strapping things. Uh, remote, this is not a test. I don't know what that's all about. Bexel batteries, nothing beats a Bexel. Some screws, you know what we do with those. And then curiously, it looks like this is like a retail sticker that would go on the TV and some product literature. I'm gonna get rid of that, but I do wanna bring this in. This is the setup guide and I highly recommend you use it. Even though I'm gonna show you how to do this, don't toss this away because you might need it. So the trickiest part of getting this stand assembled is actually getting this metal piece onto the base. And there's really no good way to do it. There are a couple of slots here that match up with some bump outs on the stand. So just use that as your guide. And then really, you just kind of got to shimmy it in place while keeping this pointed down as much as possible. There we go. The next move is to get the TV face down on a table. We used a piece of foam from the box and then you just want to slide the stand into place. That leaves us with four screws, so let's continue screwing. And here we go, back of the TV shot. Obviously it's in this off-white color. Now, I just called LG like seconds ago to find out if this is a South Korea exclusive thing or if this is what's shipping to the US. Is there a charcoal version of that? I want the official word from them. So check back on the full review. I'll have a firm answer for you on that. Otherwise, it's what you would expect from an LG OLED for HDMI 2.1 inputs with uh, 4K 120 hertz right there on the label, three on the side, one on the back. There's even a little bit of an NVIDIA G-Sync flex happening on the back of the TV as well. So, you know, pretty straightforward. We do have some plastic to remove and then we're gonna flip this thing around. You know, one of these days I'm gonna unbox and set up this TV and not be totally blown away, but this is not that day. This TV's thin profile gets me every single time. Such an attractive TV. By the way, LG called back and it turns out that the off-white color on the back of this TV is only for a few markets outside the US. So if you buy in the US, you'll get the charcoal gray on the back. Now, let's turn this thing on and see what we get. So we turn it on and it's the usual LG WebOS setup where it wants to know our region. It's gonna have voice prompts on at first, but eventually you get to turn that stuff off. Then it's gonna run you through a like ridiculous amount of stuff that you have to agree to. And I know it's a lot to read, but take your time, kind of check this out, know what kind of information about yourself you're submitting, do what you're comfortable with. I'm gonna select all because I just wanna move on and I have nothing to hide here. Then it's gonna do a sort of analysis of what you've got connected to the TV. So this would be a good time to make sure all your stuff is plugged in and turned on. It'll automatically sense what you've got connected. In this case, it's just a Sony Blu-ray player, actually not a DVD player, but uh, if you have a console, make sure that's connected and turned on, satellite box, cable box, what have you. Next. Speaking of cable or satellite, it'll know that you're connected, but it's not gonna know where you live. So if you want region specific stuff, you'll wanna put in your information. This is also the place that you would run an antenna scan to see what kind of over the air channels are available in your area. I'm just going to skip all of that and move along. Next, it's gonna wanna know if you're stand mounted or wall mounted. And this is actually because it's going to change the audio output depending on what you select. So obviously we're on a stand. So here it's gonna ask you if you wanna turn on AI Picture Pro or AI Sound Pro. 
You can choose to turn this stuff on later, which is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna start with it off, mostly because I've had experience with it and I know how that works. I'm not gonna want AI Sound Pro on for this TV regardless, and I'll show you AI Picture Pro later. Next, it wants to know if you have an LG account. If you don't, you can skip right past this. I'm not gonna bother with that either. And then we saw this with the G1. It asks if you want to sign into Prime Video or Sling TV right here. This is almost sort of like an advertisement because like these apps are available in WebOS and you can add them yourself if you want to. So I'm skipping right through that as well. So when all that wraps up, it's gonna dump you into LG channels, which is basically free streaming TV on the internet. I'm actually gonna get out of that. We'll open up Netflix here because what we need to do is make a few settings adjustments. So we'll pop into all settings and we'll go ahead and adjust the picture mode first. You know how I roll. We're gonna start with ISF bright uh, and kind of take things from there. That'll change the color temperature to a little bit closer to what I'm gonna have to calibrate for. Then we wanna get into some advanced settings. And one of the settings that I wanna try and find here under brightness is peak brightness. My experience with this has been to set it about medium. We'll make some adjustments as we actually uh, measure this TV. I also want to go into the clarity section and I know this is going to be controversial because a lot of people really like to keep motion smoothing on but for my review process I start with it off to find out what kind of judder or stutter we're going to see. Now I know you're going to see some stutter because this is an OLED TV. It can get very bright and that's just a natural issue uh, because of its instant response time. I do want to point out that you could go with user selection, maybe turn D judder uh, to one and I would back down D blur to one or maybe even zero because don't really have a whole lot of blurring problem with this TV, but because I am so sensitive to soap opera effect, almost just prefer to deal with the stutter and go with off. Now you can do whatever you like. I just like to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. Next, I'm gonna bounce down to the general area and we're gonna go into AI service. This is where you can turn on AI Picture Pro or AI Brightness settings, uh, as well as genre selection and AI Sound Pro. We'll cover a little bit more about what these do and some of the restrictions that they put on your ability to adjust settings in the full review. I just wanna point out that I have all these turned off for now and we'll mess around with those when we get into the full review. So I've started a title with uh, Adobe Vision and I've paused it so that uh, we don't have any problem with copyright stuff. And we'll go into the picture settings once again. It is already selected Cinema Home, uh, which is what I'm gonna end up preferring as we know from the G1 OLED. We get a little bit brighter performance out of Cinema Home, but we can go ahead and check some of the advanced settings, make sure they're in good shape. Looks like everything's maxed out, which is what we would expect. Peak brightness is set to high as I expected. Uh, go into the clarity section and once again, I'm going to see that cinematic movement is locked in. Now, if I wanted to turn this off and I kind of do, I would go to cinema home or I can go into general and get into the AI service menu and turn off auto genre selection and auto brightness settings. That'll let me go back into the picture settings, pick clarity again, go all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see that I can now turn it off if I want to. That's gonna do it for Dolby Vision. Now let's get into HDR. It's gonna be a similar story with uh, standard HDR10 stuff. I've gone into YouTube, started an HDR video, paused it, we'll go into picture settings, and this is gonna look very similar to what we did with Dolby Vision in that I'm gonna go ahead and go to Cinema Home. That'll warm up the color temperature a little bit for me, go into advanced settings, Double check the brightness settings, looks good. HDR tone mapping is on, peak brightness is high. All that looks great. Go into clarity and as expected, I'll be locked. Oh, nope, not locked out of the uh, true motion. So we'll go ahead and turn that off here. Then for grins, I wanna go into general, check AI service again. Looks like brightness settings and genre selection are turned on. So just as a starting point, I'll disable those. And that is it for initial settings. So to get a few first impressions, I went ahead and watched this TV for a few minutes. But to be honest with you, I only needed a few seconds. This TV looks fantastic already. I think the devil is gonna be in the details, specifically the shadow detail. So we are gonna dive deep in that for the full review. Also gaming, can't wait to see what the gaming experience is like on the C1. But I have to be honest with you, this looks fantastic enough that I'm kind of questioning the G1. Like, do we need the G1? Granted, it's the gallery series, but the whole brighter OLED thing, 
I don't know, the C1's looking pretty great, so be sure to come back for the full review. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think of the C1 so far? Is this on your radar for a purchase this year? Let me know about that in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and here's two other videos that I think you'll like.